Yo guys, Tanmay here for Simple Snippets and in this video tutorial, we are going to be learning the concept of function overloading and we will see what function overloading means, the theoretical aspect as well as we will see a program and how to implement function overloading. So before we start off with this topic, it is very important that you understand the concept of functions in C++ and for that you can watch the previous two video, video tutorials of this playlist and I will put the links in the description. So with that being said, let's get started. So what does function overloading mean in C++? So let me just read out the definition or a basic description of function overloading. So function overloading is a feature in C++ programming where two or more functions can have the same name but different parameters. Now you already know what parameters are that is the values that we pass in the opening and closing round braces in the function prototype or function signature. Now as I mentioned if you don't know what functions are you can check out the previous two video tutorials which are on functions itself from this playlist. So function overloading basically can be considered as an example of polymorphism which is a feature of C++ and we will discuss polymorphism in detail in further tutorials. So what does different parameters mean? Now there are certain rules that a overloaded function must follow. So these are the different three different parameters or three different conditions. So an overloaded function can have different type of parameters, different number of parameters and different sequence of parameters. So to the right we have six different cases of overloaded function. So number one you can see we have void print so print is the function name void is written type which means it is not returning any value and you have the opening and closing round bracket so in this case we do not have any parameter now the second function is again print so the name of the function is same however in this case we are passing an integer value as a parameter in the third one we are passing one parameter but this is a different type of parameter so this satisfies the first case that is different type of parameters so the number two and three examples of that overloaded function is a case of different type of parameters number one and two of the example is the case of different number of parameters. So in the first case we have zero parameters being passed and the second example we have one integer parameter being passed. So this is allowed. Now for the third case different sequence of parameters. So you can see we have example number five and six. So in both cases we are passing two parameters. One is integer and one is double. But if you observe five and six the sequence that is the order in which the parameters are passed is, is swapped or is changed. So in number five we have first integer and then double and in number six we have first double and then integer. So again this is a case of correct function overloading or correct overloaded function. So this was the theoretical aspect of function overloading but why do we exactly need overloading? So imagine a case wherein you need to print different values depending upon what user passes. Say let's take this example itself. Now if a user passes nothing you want to print some message. Now if the user passes an integer value you want to print that integer value. So, in, so if function overloading didn't exist you would have made different functions with different names. So you would have wanted to make six different functions which basically are just going to print the message or is basically going to print whatever the user passes. So the functionality is same but just because function overloading didn't exist in that case you have to create six different names for the same functionality. So this is where function overloading comes into picture using a single name you can like perform same activities or you can implement the same functionality. So now let's go ahead and see a practical example. So we'll try to create a program and overload a function. So go ahead and quickly open up your ID and type in the code that I've already written. So this is the basic structure of a C++ program. Topic is function overloading. So in this program we will try to perform addition of different data types that is integer, float, double and we will try to perform addition using the same function name but we will try to overload that function. So let's just create the function first. So the function name is add and let's try to create int add we'll pass int a comma int b so this is the first function the name of the function is add and it is going to return an integer value so i'll say return a plus b so whatever parameters are being passed it is going to perform addition and just going to return that value now what if the user passes two float or double values that is the data type being passed is double so we have decimal point in consideration so now what i'll say is double add double a comma double b so in this case the function name is same as you can see we have add over here we have add over here but here the parameters are passed as double and double and then since the addition of the two double variables would again be a double integer uh, double variable so the return type is going to be double so i'll say return a plus b 
now we can also overload this function to take in three parameters so let's try to create that i'll say int add int a comma int b comma int c here the function would return addition of three variables so we have created three different variants of the same function name that is add and essentially it is performing the same logical task that is the operation is addition operation however the number of parameters the type of parameters is different and let's take a case wherein the sequence of parameters is also different so i'll say double add int a comma double b return a plus b and just copy and paste this and just change the sequence that is double a and int b so we'll just try to add comments and try to number these functions so this is number one we'll say number two this is number three number four and number five so the reason i gave this functions number is because we can then see which function is being called in the main function so in the main function let's try to call all these five different functions in fact what we can do is inside each function we can print out its number so i'll say see out function one and then inside the second i'll say function two inside this i'll say function three here I'll say function 4 and lastly I'll say function 5. So first let's try to pass two integer variables so that function 1 is going to be called and we can verify this in this statement itself. So I'll say C out add 1 comma 2. So this is basically the first function going to be called and we'll see and this will be confirmed if it prints this message. Let's try to call the second function which has two double variables. So I'll say 3.5 comma 4.5. So this has to call the second variant. For the third one, we have three different integer variables. So I'll say 3 comma 4 comma 5. For the fourth one, we have first integer. So I'll say 3 and the second one is a double. And for the fifth variant, we have first one as double and the second one as integer. So I'll say 3.5 comma 4. Just save this as function overloading dot cpp let's try to compile and run this first let me just try to compile so that let we can check if there is any syntax errors okay so i just missed out a semicolon over here let me just save this and try to compile it again okay i have again missed out semicolons so this is a very common mistake that most programmers commit and they forget to end the statement with semicolons just save this compile it again and it should compile correctly okay so we got the compilation results there are zero errors and zero warnings so let's try to run this i'll click on run and there you go with the message as function and the va value one then we have actually printed out the addition of two numbers so it's you can see it is not properly structured so let me just add an escape sequence over here or i'll say addition is Let me just save this and compile and run. Okay, so as you can see, first the function one was called because you can see this message printed function one and the addition is three because you can see over here that we've passed one and two. For the next, we have function two being called and the addition is eight because you can see we have passed 3.5 and 4.5. Then the function three is called and the addition is 12 because we have passed 3, 4 and 5. For the function 4 we have 7.5 and similarly for function 5 we have 7.5 because we've just swapped the places of integer and double variables over here. So this is how function overloading works and depending upon the number of parameters, the type of parameters and sequence of parameters, the appropriate function is being called. So function overloading helps us to overload a function with same name and performs similar functionality with the same name so that you don't have to create different names for different functions. So that's about it for function overloading and I hope you understood the concept of function overloading, why we need function overloading and how to practically implement function overloading in a program.
So that's it for this video guys. If you have any queries, you can put them in the comment section. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Peace.